Essential oils are everywhere. Their therapeutic benefits have led to a massive surge in popularity. You see them for sale online, in social media, on Amazon, even the grocery store shelf. But you have to ask yourself, was it ethically and sustainably sourced? With the increased popularity of essential oils, too many companies, big and small, are in the dark as to where their oils are coming from. Some even intentionally take advantage of farmers and distillers while cutting corners and padding profits. They advertise their products as 100% pure when they truly have no visibility into who is producing the oils or how it's being done. They did, however, wrap it in a pretty label and bought some Google ad space. It's easy for a consumer to get lost in this growing marketplace. Since 2008, doTERRA has sold more than 187 million bottles of essential oils to nearly 9.8 million customers worldwide. They trust doTERRA because we only source the very best essential oils in the world. Since many plants grown for essential oils thrive in developing countries, doTERRA is committed to making sure the lives of each farmer, harvester, and distiller are better because of our partnership. We call this co-impact sourcing positive impact for everyone along the entire supply chain and the purest essential oils for you. Our co-impact sourcing commitment is to one, be directly involved at the source. Through this, we know the people and processes involved. Two, ensuring positive social impact, including job creation, fair labor conditions, and even community development projects. And three, environmental stewardship and sustainability. You get the highest quality and most effective essential oils, along with the knowledge that your purchase protects growers and distillers from being cheated by middlemen and large corporations. When you purchase a doTERRA essential oil, you can be a conscious consumer and know you are getting oils that are not only traceable, but are proven and tested to work for you and those you care about. To learn more about co-impact sourcing and our sourcing guiding principles, and to hear the stories from farmers and distillers across the globe, visit sourcetoyou.com. Doterra, pursue what's pure. Hi, I'm Kirk Jowers, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Tim Valentiner, Doterra Vice President of Global Strategic Sourcing, and Bishnu Adhikari, the Doterra Director of Co Impact Sourcing. Tim and Bishnu, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our pleasure to be here. I wish we were in Nepal or Guatemala or Kenya or some other place to do this, but uh, we'll take what we can get. I'm thrilled to, to be with you today. That's right. Thank you very much. Now, Tim and Vishnu, uh, you along with the amazing sourcing team that we have here at doTERRA have really been the pioneers to bring this co-impact sourcing vision to reality. So first, tell me a little bit about your professional background before coming to doTERRA and how it prepared you to do this work. Tim, I'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about your professional background before coming to doTERRA and how it prepared you to do this work. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, thankfully to my parents, was able to grow up in a family that really prioritized and starting at a very young age, um, taking us uh, on unique experiences in, at beginning in rural Mexico to participate in village development and community uh, community projects. Um, and so community development and poverty eradication has always kind of been a north, north star of sorts for our family and, and has translated for me uh, personally and professionally. And I'm, I'm really so grateful for parents that really prioritize that for our family. And um, it's really guided and directed to what I've uh, tried to accomplish later on in life. Uh, living in Bolivia for two years was also a unique opportunity living in the lowlands and highlands and uh, being able to immerse yourself in any uh, place or culture for an extended period of time has a profound effect. Um, but trying to just really carry that motivation through college and into you know, undergraduate uh, pursuits and studies and then, and then trying to do some good and make a difference in, in you know, job and professional opportunities once school is finished. You are joined by an incredible uh, human being. And um, Vishnu, tell us a little bit about, about your life and what led you to, to this spot. Hey, I don't have anything like Tim had, but... <laughs> you had far more, Vishnu. You actually legitimately had uh, far more than I do. Yeah. I uh, grew up in a rural mountain of Nepal. Um, 
turn my hopes and dreams to reality by hard work and education and, of course, some um, good luck in yeah. the way. Um, I got a scholarship to go to Russia for my civil engineering degree. Upon my return, I worked for the Nepalese government and then uh, the international development component of the U.S. government called uh, USAID. And um, that was an incredible experience to reach out to the min many community in that uh, impo impoverished uh, country of Nepal to help uh, with projects. Um, after that, I came to California for my another master degree uh, in Monterey. And upon completion, I went back to Nepal and worked for a nonprofit called Choice Humanitarian. Yeah. Um, later, I rejoined USAID. In the meantime, I had multiple opportunities to uh, consult for the World Bank to uh, help them implement poverty and agriculture-related uh, projects. And now uh, it's a full circle to come to doTERRA with that uh, experience to be able to um, work in the co-impact sourcing uh, program that would um, impact millions of people in many different countries. And I hope to draw from that experience and education to make it uh, um, expanded to many sourcing locations around the world. Earlier in this session, we learned about Haiti as a key part of the genesis for the co-impact sourcing model. How did Haiti and other sourcing initiatives that uh, around that time lead to defining what has become our sourcing guiding principles and adopting this model in other parts of the world? Tim? In terms of co-impact sourcing model development, and yeah, Haiti was such a big uh, part of that genesis. And really six years ago, when we, uh, you know, when Emily and uh, Brandon and I were able to go to Haiti, it, it really was trying to identify opportunity. And there was clearly a massive opportunity there in terms of filling a lot of the gaps of what, um, a lot of good things had been started already, but we really, with our partner, but we, we saw that there was, there was opportunity to do more. And this, this helped lead to the vision of what, you know, we ultimately tried to accomplish of, improving our organization of our supply chain and just how and where we got our oils and being very deliberate about that. Through this, we decided to build a framework which you know, now has become our sourcing guiding principles. There are eight of them and they really just help define uh, what we want our partnerships to look like, how can we better prioritize farmers and how can we make sure that everyone's being treated fairly along the whole supply chain. Um, this is all happening through fair and on-time payments through prepayments at times when needed, uh, through trainings, um, through investments that we can make on the ground with our partners or even you know, on our own in some cases where necessary. And ultimately just providing a commitment to the people that we're working with um, that they know that we're committed to them and that they can have the security and knowledge and, and know that they can commit to us as well. Some of my most meaningful experiences uh, in my life, and certainly with doTERRA, have been on co-impact sourcing trips. Most recently, I was in Kenya mm -hmm. and spent a day with a man named Samuel Aguirre. He uh, he's, has a wife, three children, and seven people work on two acres of land uh, growing geranium and tea tree. And, um, and he has two more acres he's trying to get into our system. I think he has now, uh, Taylor reported back, and, and that's gonna employ uh, yet another like four to five people. And, uh, and he talked about, as we were laying our, our, our mulch, our all natural uh, mulch uh, on there about how um, just the, the on-time fair payment has completely changed his life because it used to be unpredictable He'd have to wait maybe six months. Who knows how much you'd get at the end of that. And so the ability to just plan your lives, we take for granted. But um, doTERRA revolutionized that. And I'm, I'm so proud of, of you two for, for leading that charge. So talk to me about what makes doTERRA different, why it is important that we have these sourcing guiding principles and how they provide our partners with a framework 
and promise for pure business practices? So in terms of how and where we're sourcing, we are always focused first and foremost on purity, of course. We, we, have, to have, we have to have purity and we have to have CPDG quality wherever we're working, no matter where that is around the world. You know, that's sourcing the best, we have to. Right. Um, but we also care deeply about you know, where we're sourcing these oils, not just for the purity component, but also who can we lift and benefit along the way throughout this process. And that's where we, bring in the helping the most with, you know, sourcing the best and helping the most. So at doTERRA, we're, we're very cognizant of this, of course, and want to continue to being a true leader as it relates to sustainability and fairness, um, but also ensuring that our ethos as a company is really driving and directing what we do as a company, not just what we say or market or talk about, but what we are truly meaningfully implementing throughout our supply chain and through how we act and how we treat all of our supply partners. Thank you, Tim. I would like to add um, a little more on that. Please. Um, as we talk about uh, in our definition of co-impact sourcing, there need to be shared value for uh, all throughout the supply chain where we are working around the world in now actually 45 plus countries. Huh. This framework allows us to responsibly work in a uh, diverse sets of countries, including developing countries, where we can uh, empower and help more people. What was it about doTERRA that made you feel like you could do even more good coming here rather than uh, continuing your great work uh, that you were doing? Um, what was the attraction? What was the hook that brought you over to us? My passion to reach out to different cultures and understand their uh, motivation and challenges, how they do their business, right? especially in dealing with the poverty and social issues. Um, I had enough experience in the country of Nepal, and I wanted to uh, replicate those examples around the world, and doTERRA give me a perfect venue for this. As we are an agriculture-based company, and many of the poor around the world uh, depend on agriculture, and it's, it's a perfect venue for them to start growing new uh, crops that they have a, a fixed market uh, with doTERRA. So, it's a business solution to the poverty. Well, and, and President Obama's top, uh, top person in Africa said something that really hit me at the time. And again, I'd never even heard of doTERRA when I heard her speech, but she said, one, one dollar of, of money earned by someone in Africa was, was worth at least five dollars given by a nonprofit. And that really took a while for me to understand it, but I've, Thanks to you and Tim, I'm starting to figure it out a little bit more. And so let me, let me jump back into how exactly do these sourcing guiding principles work in practice? Why is this a solution to end poverty? Well, um, tying into that and what you just mentioned, but uh, and together with you know, Bishnu's comment on that so much of the world are farmers and they need agricultural opportunities to step forward, that, so the small farmer family you met in Kenya is a perfect example of this. They have, you know, two acre, four acres of land. Right. They've probably been growing corn, maize, uh, maybe some other types of cassava or some other just staple crops to eat right. for, for generations. And they are maintaining and staying at their, their poverty level because- It's subsistence. It's subsistence. And yeah. they have very little access, if any, to sell their products in the market. What we're able to provide through you know, our sourcing efforts, what doTERRA can provide is by teaching and training these farmers that continue to grow some subsistence crops, but we're gonna give you seedlings. We're gonna give you tools through mobile apps. We're gonna bring trainers, field officers that are coming, coming to visit you regularly, and we're gonna teach you how to grow this crop called geranium. You can't eat it, so it's a risk for them to, to pull out 
the crops they can eat and survive on to grow a crop that they can't eat. Right. And there's because of this, there's usually a very, you know, there's hesitancy, there's reluctancy to 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 partner to to go down this route. But um, like you saw, when they do this and the first time they sell the geranium to, you know, the collectors that we work with that will that are from the distillery that come and help them harvest it at the right time and they cut it and they weigh it and they receive a payment on their mobile phone that day or the next day, they are very eager to start planting the rest of their fields, right. their other two acres to geranium or tea tree or other crops because this is often the first time ever in their lives in many generations that they are receiving, you know, they're, they're planting a cash crop and not just any cash crop, a value added agricultural crop that's leading to a product where we can afford to pay them a very fair price and much more than they would make by growing subsistence crops and trying to sell them in the local markets along with the 10 or 100,000 other neighbors who right. are doing the exact same thing. And, and to your point, this guy has gone from a dirt floor to a, a nice home with even a stone wall around it. And I, I asked him, is that because of crime? Are you worried about crime? And he said, no, elephants. <laughs> <laughs> so Elef the different Elef challenges we each have. But <laughs> In that part of the world, elephants are the rodents yeah. that are, are great, messing up their gardens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in terms of how this is exactly how these these sourcing guiding principles work. I mean, this is this is providing commitments. This is providing fair and on-time payments and prepayments and training. And it's a it it changes lives for generations. And it's incredibly meaningful. But it's a matter of of trying to overcome the reluctancy or the 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 fear that they might have of because many of times they might have been burned in the past. Right. Um, some of these other ways, you know, other sourcing guiding principles and practice and in action, um, you know, of our eight. Um, another really of our eight sourcing guiding principles, a great example is the w amazing work our partners in Albania are doing with Helichrysum. Um, they, they had a small operation at first. We partnered with them about four years ago. And since then, they are now working with hundreds of farmers in northern Albania. Um, most of these are women farmers, which is awesome, of course. And they are able to provide the same kind of services and training, seedlings, um, and then long-term commitments with contracts that they can give to the farmers because we give them, we give our distiller partners the contracts and commitments to buy the oil. Our Albanian partner is now one of the most important industries in Northern Albania. Um, the prime minister went and visited their farm into the distillery just about a month ago because this is such uh, you know, a huge impetus and growth for the, company, for the country. Incredible. Um, this is also really exciting this year, especially because their helichrysum, this, the hard work that comes from Albania is part of our new helichrysum touch that is being launched with uh, Connection. And so we're excited to bring you know, these years of work to uh, you know, all of our customers now through this amazing new product with our helichrysum touch. Vishnu, it's not just in developing worlds. Tell me uh, some other things that are going on with doTERRA and co-impact sourcing. Um, there are a few um, outstanding examples around the world, and I would like to share our uh, peppermint uh, example from India. Um, of course, we continue to um, source from Willamette Valley um, in Oregon our peppermint, but we also source uh, from northern India, uh, where uh, smallholder farmers are united in cooperatives and our uh, incredible uh, sourcing partner uh, who dis collects and distills those uh, peppermint and uh, provides um, us. It is a great example of our sourcing guiding principle in action, generating and supporting much needed jobs in one of the most uh, impoverished uh, state in India, they are also focused on building and supporting small farmer cooperatives because of the benefits that they can collectively uh, receive from this model. Through this organization of the farmers, we are able to support now 
thousands of smallholder farmers mm. in that part of the world. That's yeah, fantastic. And this is a, a great example of, obviously our peppermint oil from the Willamette Valley in Oregon is beautiful and amazing. Um, and it you know, meets our highest qualities. Uh, but we also have a chance and an opportunity to help the most by also meeting our high CPTG standards and quality needs through peppermint oil, but doing it in a place in the world where we can have a massive, meaningful impact. Tim, could you tell us a little bit about a supply chain that's focused on the environmental stewardship side of co-impact sourcing? Yeah, of course. Um, so under environmental stewardship, uh, an entity that some have heard of over the years is now our 100% owned, 100 doTERRA owned operation in New Zealand called Aotearoa. Um, this is for Douglas fir. Uh, this is such an awesome oil with its aroma and, and uses. It's one of my personal favorites actually. Um, and it's not just an amazing oil by itself, but it's also where it comes from and, and how, we, how we get this, what, all that goes into producing it. Um, Douglas fir in New Zealand is an invasive species. Um, and so through the initiative that's been, you know, set up there through our, our now general managers running Aotearoa, um, these two gentlemen had this vision years ago and it's been so wonderful to see all this come now um, full circle with, with how we're able to take that vision and, and now expand it even further of really turning what's a pest, uh, a problem through Douglas fir as an invasive species into a unique, beautiful product that doTERRA customers are the only ones in the world that get it. Um, uh, our doTERRA managers, you know, have been incorporating also in recent, uh, just this past year, a truly innovative program called Waste to Wilderness um, that allows us to take all the Douglas fir biomass after it's been distilled, combine that with compost material and food waste and scraps from local restaurants and food production companies in, that, in the Queenstown area, take old you know, wooden pallets used for shipping that are unused now, and they create a compost base within the wooden pallets and plant native tree and native huh. forest plants in this in the square meter, you know, it's this, he's calling, they're calling it, you know, native species growing square meter <laughs> by square meter. Yeah. And as you start this basic, uh, this, this transportable uh, square meter of, of native growing plants, we can then take these and plant these very easily into forest areas. So as we are removing the Douglas fir pest, turning it into a sustainable, beautiful essential oil, and then reusing full circle all of the waste products plus others and replanting now native growing plants back into the forest areas. And this is really a closed loop and a full circle method that we're gonna be able to reforest uh, in our small way, uh, New Zealand's biodiversity and helping to maintain their unique biodiversity there. And then of course you can always learn more about the sourcing guiding principles that we've been talking about today um, on source to you.com new and updated and fresh content always lives there and uh, we're we love to nerd out on defining these things and developing a lot of frameworks and metrics for measurement and we can share kind of the highlights in this setting but please visit source you.com often we we really try to keep everyone updated there but also share you know much more in terms of the the scale and scope of the impact that we're we're having around the world through these initiatives and of course, through all of our amazing wellness advocates and customers that are really the, the way and means by all this to be accomplished. Um, without everyone playing their part in terms of education and teaching and training about the oils and um, you know, using the products, being conscious consumers about being diligent about knowing where their oils and their products are coming from, uh, it enables us to be able to um, have this impact through how we source our oils and to make meaningful change and to really, our goal is to eradicate poverty and to improve livelihoods around the world. And being able to do this through our supply chains is, is really something unprecedented and we hope to continues to be a model for other companies um, and really to be a standard for what we hope to accomplish. I've seen it firsthand, and, and I'm so grateful for the work that you do for these people. Once you meet them, they're a part of your heart and your life forever. 
Um, you know, you mentioned Albania. Uh, I was able to go back where Bulgaria honored doTERRA as the company of the year in Washington, D.C., and their ambassador, and who's visited our site there because um, they felt that no company had done as much for the small farmers of Bulgaria, and that's happening across the world. And, and I just appreciate so much your, your, your life history and your devotion to this. And uh, I appreciate you being with us today to explain a little more about all the care and planning that goes into uh, how we source our oils and our collective devotion to the co-impact sourcing model where we are truly committed to sourcing the best and helping the most. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. There are now many places around the world where doTERRA's co-impact sourcing is affecting hundreds of thousands of lives. As our sourcing team travels to meet with these farmers, harvesters, and distillers, we send our video team along to capture some of these stories in these communities. The exclusive doTERRA series, Behind the Bottle, premiered last year. This series provides a look at the lives of the people and the communities impacted by our co-impact sourcing initiatives. You can now binge all 20 episodes of Behind the Bottle Season 1 in our Pursue 2020 bonus content section, as well as on the doTERRA corporate YouTube channel. Here are some highlights from Season 1. Behind every bottle of essential oil lies a story, one of personal growth, positive impact, and lasting change. Where the moral is always love and the motivation is always to do good. Have you ever wondered where your bottle of essential oil comes from? Who it touches and impacts along the way? This is the story behind the story. This is Behind the Bottle. So here in Bihar, in northern India, on the border with not too far from Nepal. Um, we've been working here in Bihar for almost three years on a peppermint co-impact sourcing project. And this is the distillation facility that we donated through our great partner here called Farms and Farmers. And we're working to introduce peppermint into this area of Bihar. A lot of these farmers once produced mint years ago with the creation of synthetic Carbone, they're lost their market and lost their crop. So we're helping some new farmers as well as some old farmers that used to produce mint, uh, mentharvensis, to introduce mentha peprida or peppermint here in, in Bihar. So we decided to do this particular location because around this area we have many villages that cultivate in small patches. So this is more of a centralized location that is convenient for multiple villages to kind of come in. Ideally, within 24 hours, they should get the product to the still to get the maximum yield. We have developed a unique model and mobile-based technology which connects farmers to their entire agricultural requirements. So small farmers, small Indian farmers, they can get access to better agricultural input, they get access to better and customized crop advisory services, and lastly, they can also sell their farm produce to better market and bigger uh, uh, buyers. And that's how basically you know, they experience more than 50% increment in their net income from agriculture. Farmer comes and asks, I have a three acre piece of land, so what should I do with it? So we advise him, key, based on your geography, based on your soil content, this is the right crop for your land, and this is the right time for sowing that crop. On day one, we start giving the right advisory. 
so right advisory reduces the price significantly and increases the profit margin it's all about you know giving hope to the community it's all about creating more prosperity to the farmer to their family we are hoping to continue to find out more practical solution to these uh, social and economic problems in india this is going to be a great opportunity for many to see that simple labor can change their life uh, this will make a greater impact in the area and i'm looking forward to many farmers joining this effort Doterra helps empower farmers, their families, and communities all over the world. We are committed to pursuing pure business practices in all we do, to source the best and help the most. But what we've talked about today is just the tip of the iceberg. Be sure to check out the exclusive Pursue 2020 bonus content section. We have in-depth interviews with some of our sourcing partners and team members, including our partners in Albania for the new Helichrism Touch, as well as an exciting update with Dr. Osgothorpe on the Sanag Regional Hospital, benefiting the frankincense harvesting communities we work with in Somaliland. You can also take a closer look at our Indian peppermint sourcing and all that is happening in Brazil and our Coimpact sourcing initiative for Copaiba. You won't want to miss seeing these bonus interviews and hearing these stories. Join us this afternoon as we dive deeper into Deep Blue and other products that help us find relief. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.